Steve Leisman joins us right now on set with the results from the latest edition of the All America Economic Survey. Today, Steve is taking a look at TikTok, whether it's seen as a security threat and whether Americans want it banned. Steve, what's the... It's very interesting, uh, Becky. It's an issue that pits national security concerns against personal tech freedoms, and a majority of Americans are concerned enough about national security support banning TikTok or forcing its sales. But hold on, because there are substantial divides along political lines, generational lines, and I guess you'd call them along tech lines. 20% say it should be banned no matter what. 27% say it should be banned unless sold to a non-Chinese company. So put that together, 57% are in support of a ban or a sale. But 31% say, hands off my TikTok. Democrats split 40-38 in favor of a ban, so they're pretty well divided within the 3.1 percent margin of error. Independents 34-40 against a ban. Republicans 60 to 20 for the ban. A large percentage you don't see there don't know enough to say. But those splits there on the political lines are not the big splits. Take a look at these. 31 percent all want it banned, but 18 to 34, 48 percent do not want it banned. 65 and older, <laughs> what is that thing, TikTok? <laughs> They're saying, let it go. And when it comes to those who use TikTok the most, 53% of TikTok users say it shouldn't be banned. That includes 67% of daily users don't touch my TikTok and 44% of those who use it weekly or less. But 20% of the non-users say it doesn't matter. Good. Take it away. This issue may be more fraught for the Democrats and Biden than for Republicans and Trump. Biden's struggling to hold his winning coalition together and already has a problem with the youth vote in part over the Israel-Hamas war. So our latest survey shows that the 18 to 34 group uh, has a 33 percent approval rating on Biden. Their average over the course of the Biden presidency has been 40 percent. We had a tick up for Biden overall, and that was back to the average of 40 percent, but not for the youth vote, youth vote. The best outcome of a political perspective, perspective could be a sale, one that's seamless to users, but this could only be the beginning of a series of issues that pit national security and social and cultural concerns against tech freedoms maybe young against old, tech-savvy against uh, the not-so-tech-savvy. I'm not looking at you, Joe, for any particular reason. Oh, like, I'm, my I'm daughter sorry. asked me, it's my, my daughter said, you, you know, she's worried, do you have TikTok on your phone? I go, you mean my clock? What, what are you? <laughs> exactly. No, I've exactly. never been on it. I, I I'm not sure who is but qualified I, but I don't think we should ban it. So I, even though I don't know I'm anything shocked. about it. I'm, I'm shocked that the majority of younger people said yes. I go, I know. 48% said, said they shouldn't. They right, that is true. Well, you know what? So that means 50%. No, hold on, hold on. Let me take a look at that for you, Becky. You are, you know, you like you look for the wound and then you, you pour salt in it. <laughs> no, I, I want to double check that. that. I'll tell you why, because oh, I want to see. Some people there might be a large percent of undecided. Okay. So let me look at that. that, that I'm guessing sense. that was the plurality we put up. But, yeah. but you go ahead and have a conversation among yourselves. I'll look up the data. Okay. Well, the, I mean, this brings us to a very big debate that's taking place. Steve, the other thing I'll throw out while you're looking at that is the people who say, yeah, they think it should be banned, how strongly do they feel that way versus the ones who say, no, it should not be banned? And I would guess that the people who feel more strongly about it are the ones who are using it. And don't want it taken away. No, your cleverness astounds me every day. Because what we didn't do in this thing, what we didn't do this thing is what's called an intensity gauge. Yeah. We didn't ask how strongly you feel about this. It was a question that was hard enough to ask because we had to do the precept, the, the, the um, precondition, are you a TikTok user or not? Yeah. So it gets to be kind of cumbersome. But that's a great way to think about it is how intense are the feelings on this? Yeah, people who are probably angry about it if you take their TikTok away. Let's bring in two more voices on this Where are you going to be when I do the next poll? I'm calling you up first, okay? Okay, yeah. <laughs> um, the voices on TikTok and the effects of a possible for sale or nationwide ban. Joanne Lippman is a lecturer at Yale University, of course, also a CNBC contributor. And Josh Tucker is co-director of NYU's Center for Social Media and Politics. He's also professor of politics at NYU and affiliated professor of data science and the director of NYU's Jordan Center for Advanced Study of Russia. Uh, Josh, what do you think? You're, you're in tune with young people um, being at a university like this. What, what is your take on it? Yeah, I mean, we know that TikTok is enormously popular with younger users, um, and there is exactly this age discrepancy that we've talked about here previously. Um, the bigger question here is sort of like, what's the longer term ramification of this? What do we think is going to happen? Yes, younger voters are going to be upset about the fact that TikTok is banned if it was banned. But whether or not that's likely to have any sort of implication on, on the election is an open question, right? And there are a couple of reasons to think that may not be the case. One is that partisanship is 
really what drives people's voting behavior. We already know how about 90% of people are going to vote in the 2024 election, right? But so there's very... It matters. They decide elections. Yeah. And, I mean, and it's, you know, so there's very little that's sort of like, there's a small portion of the electorate that's up for grabs. We also know that there are a lot of different issues that young people vote, that care about, right? We know they care about the economy. And we also know that youth turnout has increased in recent elections, but that youth are very much concerned as well with issues like abortion. So when we ask a poll and we ask people about TikTok, yes, people are going to tell us their opinions about TikTok. And they may be very upset about it, and they might be very upset about it for good reasons. But the jump from that to it actually affecting voting behavior is actually kind of a huge leap. Joanne, I think your point was incredibly interesting. This idea that young people get their information for TikTok, so everything they think about this debate has been framed by TikTok. That's exactly right. That is, it's the primary news source for Gen Z, for people who are on TikTok and Gen Z. This is where they go for their news. All the news they're getting about this legislation comes from TikTok. And not only that, TikTok has been behind this mobilization. Like we hear, oh my gosh, there's this outcry. All the representatives are getting spammed with all kinds of calls and, and all kinds of protests from, uh, but that's because TikTok set it up. TikTok, if you go on TikTok, which I was just on TikTok, and the primary video is from the CEO. That's the number one video um, on, this, on this legislation. And it's, he's out there saying, this will be a ban. Talk to your senators. And then these, these young people are getting notifications on their phones from TikTok that say, here's how to contact your representative. Give us your zip code. We're going to tell you how to do it. So what's so funny is, and, and I don't know if it's funny, it's ironic, right. is that what the legislation is concerned about is one of the issues is can TikTok manipulate voters? Yeah. And here is sort of a great example I don't know whether you would want to call it motivation or manipulation in terms of how they're doing it.